Good day, folks. Today we will show you all the moments when customers ask for unreasonable amounts from Pawn Stars. Medieval Poleaxes Davis enters the shop dressed like a Renaissance battle fighter. With the medieval Poleaxes in front of them, Corey and Chumley couldn't help but be enthusiastic. Davis had been collecting Poleaxes for the past 20 years and was ready to sell them to the pawn shop. Poleaxes. Okay, okay to put these down? Yeah, go ahead and set them over here. <laughs> Where did you get these? The Renaissance Fair? No, I got it. Corey thinks these poleaxes will sell quickly to a military collector, but he must first verify that these two are genuine. Davis wants $7,500 for each, so Corey enlisted the help of an expert to examine the poleaxes. When the expert arrived to check the objects, he determined that both poleaxes are from the Victorian era and one of them is merely a decorative piece, indicating it was never used in a battle. I disagree. You think it's not original because it's flimsy, but that thing is hand forged and I believe it's original based on what I've studied. They were hand forging things in the Victorian. According to the expert, the decorative component should be valued around $700 while the actual one is worth around $1,500. Davis couldn't accept this and became irritated with the expert as a result. Corey, on the other hand, believed the expert's remarks and only offered him $1,500. Davis is pissed by the low rating and has stormed out, outraged at everyone. Well, if I were you, next time I'd buy one, I'd call Craig too. All right, appreciate it. All right, thank you. Bye. You Lucky Luciano's pendant. Lucky Luciano, the crime boss, certainly wore hundreds of rings in his lifetime, and David was one of the lucky ones who acquired a piece. He went into the pawn shop store and claimed that his mother had been given a Lucky Luciano ring, which David had kept for 40 years. The signet ring of the mafia boss, Lucky Luciano. This used to belong to Lucky Luciano? That was made for Lucky Luciano. I've had it in hiding for 40 years. Why would you have it in hiding? Because now he tried his luck, but Rick intervened. I guess luck isn't on Lucky's side because there's no proof that the mob leader wore the ring. And we all know that rumors can't be relied upon to make a six-figure profit. There's nothing I can do. Okay, have a good one, man. Thanks. I think that if I do a little more research, I'm actually going to prove the piece's authenticity. And I think I'm going to be able to get some... Photo of Abraham and Mary Lincoln. Mark entered the room carrying a one-in-a-million item. He demands $1 million for a photograph of Mary and Abraham Lincoln. He told Rick that he knows he has the Holy Grail photograph in history. Rick is intrigued by the item because if it's real, then it will be a jackpot for him. So a picture of Mary and Abraham Lincoln from, I believe, 1863. I thought Abe only took photos by himself. What are you talking about? Oh, he's right about that. He enlisted the help of an expert to verify its authenticity. However, it turns out that the photo does not depict Abraham and Mary Lincoln. <laughs> okay, it's not a problem. It's your career. You have a right to discredit yourself. But you know what? But I've been doing this for a really long time. Mark is irritated and he repeatedly refutes what the expert says. In the end, no agreement was reached because he still believes that the photo he owns is the real deal. Not a big deal. It will stay in the collection. In this case, I, I, never, I never got past first base. And it's, it's just the way that the, it happened. Harry Carey autographed document. Meyer is selling his Harry Carey autographed piece that was signed by 185 Hollywood celebrities. Harry Carey is a well-known actor in the 1900s who appeared in hundreds of feature films. And Meyer is looking to get 16 grand out of this deal. John Ford, William Wyler, Elia Kazan, Clark Gable. John Wayne, Mickey Rooney, Ronald Reagan is over here, names it. Rick enlisted the help of a signature expert and everything seemed to be in order. He estimated it to be worth around $5,000. Meyer is enraged, but he sticks to his 16,000 estimate. Rick makes him an offer of $3,500, but he prefers to keep the piece until someone pays his ideal price for it. But Rick disagrees and believes that the piece is not worth that much because even though there are a lot of signatures, some of them are irrelevant and this will lower the value of it even further. I think I'm gonna hold on to it, but I thank you very much for the opp opportunity. Okay, there's no way we're gonna be able to make a deal. I don't think so. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing it in, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Claude Monet's painting. Claude Monet's paintings are a gem in the entire art industry, and this man carried their family heirloom on the gold and silver pawn shop with pride, and this is a breathtaking Claude Monet painting. He expects a million bucks for it. At the Las Vegas Art Museum? It was in All 1997. Right. Okay. 
They say early period, mm -hmm. which is very vague. I mean, he lived a very long life. When the painting got checked by the expert, he said bid farewell to his high hopes because it's a complete fake. Here you don't see that. So is it real? It's in the style of Monet, but it's not absolutely not by the end of uh, Claude Monet. And not probably, real. Not real. Ugh. Hudson Bay gorged. Chris walked into the pawn shop with a serious expression on his face, clearly eager to make some business. He brought his Hudson Bay gorget in the pawn shop to show Rick and the old man, and he wants $100,000 for it. One cash, they don't want coins. Yeah. They wanted stuff. Yeah. And how much you want for it? Uh, probably about 100000 when Rick inquired about the item, he discovered that Chris's father had used his mortgage payment to buy the gorget at an auction. Rick double-checked the item and discovered that it isn't from the 1700s. He told Chris that the price should be around $1,000 because it isn't particularly valuable. Chris began cursing and declared that Rick's methods would not work on him. He stated that he would simply go. He's furious at the offer, but Rick and the old man don't mind letting a punk kid like him go because they would never even consider making a $100,000 deal with a rude customer like Chris. Um, I'd offer you a thousand bucks. I don't know what you're smoking, man, but that's not gonna work, so I'm gonna take my stuff and leave. All right, have a nice day. Jesse James Tin Type Photographs. Jesse James is without a doubt the Wild West's most famous figure, outlaw, guerrilla, and leader of the James Younger Gang in the United States. Imagine having something like that on your resume. Scott went into the pawn shop knowing how much his images are worth. He expected to get $60,000 for them. Nice photos of the James gang. This is really, really cool. By the way, that is like the worst way in the world you could store those photographs. Paper towels like that are made for scrubbing. Rick had to call in the expert, and upon authenticating, the photos are far from the real deal. Due to the photos being way less valuable than expected, Scott had to go home without closing a deal. Seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Sorry, I'd give you 10 bucks a piece for him, but I don't think you're gonna take it. <laughs> nah, I can't do that. <laughs> Have a nice day, man. Okay, thank you for your time. I have no. Babe Ruth Baseball Card. Derek went to the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Vegas with the hopes of selling his Babe Ruth baseball card. He just got this treasure from the shed of his backyard. When Rick asked him how much he wants for it, he immediately said $65,000. Card. Where did you get this? I found it in our shed in our back. It was my grandfather's. Do you have an idea what you wanted for it? $65,000. Rick called the expert and all smiles faded when the item was said to be a complete fake. He was so disappointed in the end because he came in thinking he'll bring home thousands but ended up just bringing disappointment. It's on the Babe Ruth card here. So this is without a doubt a reprint. Ah, oh, $65,000, that close, but no cigar. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment, hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, and share this video with your family and your friends. See you soon.